Hey there and welcome. Today we are going to talk about IP transit. The internet consists of internet service providers of all shapes and sizes. ISPs have two options when it comes to connecting to the internet. They can either purchase IP transit from an upstream or form a peering relationship with other ISPs. To achieve the best balance between cost and performance, internet service providers very often use a combination of these two options. In the peering relationship, ISPs exchange routing information and network traffic in order to provide access to their customers' networks. However, only customer prefixes are exchanged. Prefixes received from the upstream provider are not advertised to the peers. There is no charge for traffic exchanged between ISP peers as they don't pay the upstream to interconnect their customers' networks. This is what we call settlement-free peering. The ISPs pay only for the port on the fabric at the public peering point. Or, in case of private peering, share the cost of the circuit. The volume of IP transit data and costs are therefore reduced. Unlike peering, IP transit is a paid service whose price is determined by bandwidth usage, which can be metered using the 95th percentile method. The role of a transit provider, also called an upstream, is to connect a customer's network or downstream ISP to the global internet. To do this, the transit provider allows customer traffic to pass through its network so that it can reach all possible destinations on the internet. IP transit service is BGP based, so customers who buy IP transit must operate their own autonomous system. Customers receive a full BGP internet table that includes prefixes of other customers of the upstream, prefixes advertised by ISP peers of the upstream, prefixes received by upstream from its own upstream providers. A transit provider advertises all customers' prefixes to its peers and to all upstream providers. ISPs are organized into a hierarchical structure that consists of three tiers. Tier 1 transit providers have a global reach and are considered the backbone of the internet. They do not buy transit service and peer with each other at zero cost. Such networks connect lower tier ISPs and charge them to allow traffic to transit their networks. Tier 2 providers have large networks and a wide global presence. Such providers peer with each other to reduce costs associated with IP transit, but they also need to buy service from the Tier 1 providers. Tier 3 ISPs are local providers with national reach. They usually buy IP transit from Tier 2 providers to avoid expensive Tier 1 IP transit. Such providers are typically without any transit customers and have no peering connections. Traffic from the lower tier ISP to a higher tier provider is called going upstream. Similarly, traffic from the internet and destined to the lower tier ISP is called going downstream. Let's discuss several network topologies that define how a customer is connected to an upstream. The most straightforward design is single homed, where the customer has a single upstream connection. The ISP only announces a default route to the customer. BGP is not needed because there is only one exit path to the internet. This is the most cost-effective solution with a simple routing policy. The disadvantages are obvious. If the link or router fails, the customer's entire internet connection will also fail. A network is dual-homed if there is more than one connection to one upstream provider. A customer is protected against a link failure but the device still represents a single point of failure. We can add another router on the ISP side and connect the customer's router to the provider's routers. The failure of one of the ISP routers will have no effect on the customer connection. Redundancy on the customer side though can be further improved by adding another router to the topology. We speak about multi-home connections when the customer is connected to two different upstream providers. Unlike single home design, Multi-home topology offers the highest redundancy, reliability, and efficiency. The customer is protected from the upstream failure. When a connection to one of the providers fails, traffic is sent over another link to the second upstream ISP within seconds. Traffic from the internet to the customer's mission-critical applications is also secured because customer prefixes are advertised by at least one of the upstreams. The customer can configure specific BGP routing policies to manipulate BGP path attributes to prioritize one of the links for both outbound and inbound network traffic. We can further improve the redundancy by adding a second router on the customer side. 
The redundancy of the single multi-home design can be improved with additional links between a customer and ISPs. If one of the links fails, internet connectivity through the same ISP is maintained using the backup link. Finally, the dual multi-home design provides the highest redundancy of links, customers and ISPs, but is also typically the most expensive solution. Understanding ISP interconnection is of utmost importance. It ensures that organizations choose an effective solution that meets their needs prior to purchasing an IP transit service. Visit Noxion.com to learn how our products can help optimize and automate your multi-home network operation.